live. Welcome everybody to another session of Prevail's Compliance Corner. I'm Orly. And I'm Noelle. Today we're going to be talking about getting to 84 out of 110 with Prevail. Okay, that's a lot of numbers and kind of like microspeak. Yeah, so what does that mean? Uh, getting to 84 out of 110 with Prevail means that you reach 84 out of the 110 NIST 800 171 controls, which are key to achieving level two compliance with CMMC and getting on the path to meeting CMMC 2.0. So basically meeting 84 out of 110 means you've gotten 80% of the way towards meeting the 110 requirements of NIST 800-171 and that you are well on the way to meeting CMMC 2.0. Well, that's all great and wonderful, but um, how do you do that? Um, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. But before we jump into the story, um, I'm gonna just let my uh, colleague and friend, Noelle, introduce herself because she's the real reason we're all here. Noelle, why don't you just tell us a bit about yourself? Oh man, I'm, I'm the reason everybody's here? Oh my goodness. No it pressure. ain't me. No pressure. No, it's you too. It's you too. Okay. Um, just a little bit, very quick background on me. I've, I've worked in the DOD for many years, managing mostly IT related programs. I have a very IT heavy background and I am now the compliance manager here at Prevail because I myself have actually gone through trying to get to that 110. <laughs> it's not an easy oh, feat. Right. Right. So to, be, to quote Bill Clinton, you can feel their pain. <laughs> I really can, truly. My heart absolutely goes out to everyone in the dib having to, to get this stuff done. It is not an easy task. Yes. Uh, one little side note about uh, Bill Clinton. I just found out the other week that one of my good friends here in Boston named Ruth, her father is a journalist who um, came up with that term slick willy back in the day. She's really? Her father. Yep. Crazy. Yeah. So, Hi. yeah. Slick Willie, now you know where it came from. All world. Yeah. Um, in any case, so speaking of feeling people's pain, let's talk about what is one of the first things you should do when you're getting from eight onto the path to 84 out of 110. You, you told know, me earlier is start with a self-assessment. What does that absolutely. mean? Absolutely. Um, this is not only just a good idea, you know, when planning anything, you got to figure out where you're at now. But right. also... Everybody in the DIB is required to put their information in Dispers, which is a self-assessment. So it's not only that it's also a good idea, it's, it's required. But aside from the fact, okay, let's not see. Not just a good idea, it's the law. Pretty much. It's like your seatbelt. Um, right. So a self-assessment, you want to be as honest as you can be about where you're really at. So if you look at your spurs, that's actually a really good place to start because it gives you three options. You can either say you don't need it at all. You kind of meet it partially or, yeah, it's totally done. We've got it handled. So it's almost like a zero, 50% or 100 situation. So you either have like a, an F, a C or an A kind of thing. Mm. Um, yeah, which is a really good way of, of helping you understand, okay, well, which ones are we not doing at all? Okay, well, should we start on them? Or maybe we should look at the ones we're partially doing and finish those up first before we go back to the ones that we have to start from scratch on. And the ones that were fully implemented, okay, are they all right? Are they sustainable? Is everybody doing what they're supposed to be doing? Do we have any issues? You, you, you don't pay as much attention necessarily to them in this self-assessment, but you still wanna be really, really sure, are we actually doing this completely? So yeah, it gives you a really great baseline because without that baseline, you're gonna have no idea what you actually need to do. Yeah, and importantly there, as we were talking about before the show, is that you, the key part of the self-assessment is also figuring out where do you have CUI? Do you have it yep. um, You have it in just one particular file? Do uh, you have it on multiple servers? Where does it live? And you know, one of the things that I think you've mentioned to me before is this is an exercise, the self-assessment is an exercise in trying to take that dispersed CUI and get it perhaps into a single locale. Yeah, or or at least a single enclave or a single area, you know, whatever that ends up looking like. That can be, you know, a cloud service like Prevail, where you know it's not really a single location necessarily, but it but it kind of is. Or you could you you could have it on one server, you know, in in one office if that's what you really wanted to do. So it just absolutely you want to make sure you narrow down where it's at, and then also another thing to really think about when you're doing a self assessment: who needs to access it and how. Yeah. True. And as you said here, as in many places in life, honesty is the best policy. Absolutely. Yes. And it's going to make it a lot easier. I know it may be painful, 
you know, to sit there and have to be that honest with yourself. I know I have done it. My, it, it was not fun. It's not a fun experience. Lots of self-talk. Lots of self-talk. Um, but what it really does pay off in the long run to be as honest as you can about that self-assessment, you know, be, be even a little bit hard on yourself because the auditors are going to be harder. Right. So let's talk about the next thing. Okay. You've done that self-assessment. Um, part of getting to the 84 out of 110, uh, it's starting with the self-assessment, but the next thing, you know, um, that we talk about is uh, how Prevail can really help in that process of getting to 84 and out of 110. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when, when you do have that self-assessment, I mean, one of the key things that Prevail is so good at is securing CUI, which is really the crux of everything with CMMC version two, level two, everything with NIST 8171 encryption and, and validation and access control and ensuring the actual safety and security of CUI at rest and in transit, which is what Prevail does so well. And also deploying Prevail is very easy. That's another thing that's really great. There are a lot of solutions out there that can that can help you get to compliance. Absolutely, we you know Prevail is not the only the only horse in the stable, if you will. But we're not. Yay. <laughs> right. But deploying Prevail takes you know under an hour usually, depending on how many endpoints you have and and how you want to manage it. That's really amazing. I mean, honestly, like how many things take less than an hour to deploy to you know multiple different machines or or right. what have you. And it also isn't going to disrupt the business processes you already have. Like, for example, if you let's say that you have commercial 365, you don't want to change that. Okay, that's great. Prevail is just sort of an add-on to that. It doesn't actually affect 365 in any way. So you can have both of those things operating at the same time, and that's okay. Yeah, and then to be clear, you can also deploy Prevail to uh, your Google workspace. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, Prevail can integrate with both of those. Absolutely. Um, but to be clear, at this point, right, you've done a self-assessment, you deployed Prevail, you still haven't gotten to 84 out of 110. No, absolutely not. Only part of the way there. Yeah, only part of the way there because there is a huge chunk of it that hasn't that we haven't discussed yet at this point. Deploying Prevail is great because that's that techno the technology part of it, which is fantastic. But without the documentation, none of that matters. So a huge part, a huge part, I cannot overemphasize this enough, a huge, the biggest part debatably of anything having to do with an assessment, CMMC or NIST is your documentation. Do you yeah, have- So why don't we just take a moment and share some slides? Yeah. I think that'll please. help people to kind of uh, understand this a little. Definitely. All right, let's share these. Uh, all right, so let's talk a little bit about these. Um, let's talk about uh, one of these documentations. So you'll need documentations for every one of the control families. Yes. Um, and so here's this one. Okay, so th what's this bit of documentation we're looking at? This is a real straightforward one. So this is access control. This is ac actually the NIST number. It also corresponds to a number that you have in CMMC as well, 3.1.19. So here, it's very simple, encrypting CUI and mobile devices. I mean, that, again, that's one of the cruxes of NIST and CMMC is to make sure that CUI is safe at rest and well as in transit, and in this case, also on mobile devices and mobile computing platforms. So what we did here is just a very, very templated, very light version of something you could use to answer this control. Now, granted, there's going to be policy that has to do with this and procedure that has to do with this as well, but this is just to give you a high level of, okay, well, if I'm talking about encrypting CUI on mobile, what does that really mean? Well, you have to know who has access to it. So if you see here, we have our list of wonderful employees on the left, and then whether or not they have CUI access. That has to be listed somewhere. Who is allowed to have access to CUI is, is critical. Also, mobile device information. What type of mobile device is it? Um, also, what operating system is running on it? And what version of that operating system is running on it? Now, a lot of that information can be housed um, on, like, for example, 365 is a good example of that, where you can do that in Intune and it all does it automatically, but it, it doesn't matter. You could do it manually or automatically. It doesn't make any difference, but this information does need to be captured. And then if you are deploying Prevail as your CUI Enclave, you obviously have to say who has access to Prevail. If you notice right. here, we have a couple of people who have access to CUI. I think there's three of them here, but only two of them have Prevail access. For whatever reason, that third person, Bob doesn't get access to Prevail. We don't know why, but Bob doesn't have it. But there's going to be something in procedure. Maybe Bob doesn't have a need a need to have it on his mobile device, so that's why we don't do that. And then if you notice all the way to the right, that's NPM, which is a, a mobile 
uh, mobile profile management system or MDM, it's the same thing, mobile device management. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a way for you as the organization to manage the device. For example, if I deployed an MPM or MDM solution on onto your phone, Orly, you would have right. to download the, the profile itself and say, yes, I agree to all of the terms. And what would happen is it would force you to do certain things, whatever the policy said. A standard policy would be uh, most people now do have a six digit code on their phone, but some people still have right. four. Some people still have four. I don't know how, but some people do. And if you have an MPM, maybe it, it should say, well, you have to have a six digit code. So what would happen, Orly, is you'd have to go into your phone and update it to six digits before you were ever allowed to touch anything that was having to do with the company. Oh. So that's what it means by, by um, that's how it's managing it. So that's a very like high level version of everything that you could you could start talking about to answer this specific control. All right, let's just look at one more real quickly and then uh, we'll jump back into the conversation. Oh, this is another another one that's that's real easy. Well, I mean, not easy, but it's easy to validate. Um, employees FIPS validated cryptography when used to protect the confidentiality of CUI. What you're seeing here is actually from the NIST Computer Security Resources Center website. You'll notice that we circled the certification number. That is for Prevail. That is our FIPS 140-2 certification. You have to have a FIPS certified cryptography system going on to protect your CUI. Anywhere your CUI lives, there has to be a FIPS certified solution involved. So that is that is really big. Um, it, it can't just be like encrypted. Oh, I'm using 256 encryption. No, that's not enough. You have to have it FIPS validated, like what you're seeing right. here. Okay. Um, yeah, so those give us an example of the documentation that you need to have. Um, and, you know, give us a sense of kind of the level of documentation that people will want. But to be clear, right, that documentation is what is going to be um, kind of the key part, one of the key parts also of your getting to the compliance promise land and uh, getting to the 84 out of the 110, right? Avail yeah. can get you so far, but you also really need that documentation. Absolutely. Um, Without the documentation, you're not going to get anywhere. Right. Right. It doesn't exist unless it's in writing. Exactly. So let's actually just finish up by talking about the last part of this whole puzzle, and that's the partner network. Uh, what what do you want to say about that? So I I think it's something I actually I've, I've had this conversation with so many people, um, even in the past few weeks, especially because there's different customers we have and prospective customers who ask these questions. Well, what do I do? How do I get started? And I had the exact conversation we've had today multiple times, and then it always comes to this part where I say, but remember, you know, I never assume that I'm right about everything. And, you know, I want to have experts. Even you. Oh, gosh, no. Yeah, absolutely not. I never assume I'm right about everything. I always want to assume that an, an expert can come in or somebody who does this for a living and this is you know part of their business model comes in to validate, even if it's just to validate what I've already done. I really believe it is so important to have, you know, if you can have consultants come in at whatever point you're comfortable with. Some companies are going to want a consultant from day one because they do not want to deal with it. Understandable. But there are other companies who maybe want to do 80% of the work or, you know, 70% of the work and then have someone come in and say, yeah, I'm going to validate that 70 to 80% of work you've done and also help you with that last 20. So that's probably more where our customers would fall into. You know, once they once they get that documentation done and they've got Prevail deployed, you're at that 70, 80%, depending on where your documentation's at. And you can bring a partner in at that point to help you with those last things that you're trying to just right. sort of address. Basically, the, the, what we refer to as the 26 out of the 110. Right. And so, also validate everything else that you've done and make sure that, you know, yeah, you're on the right track. So if I can summarize, uh, Noel, right, uh, getting to 84 out of 110 on, uh, out of, on the NIST 800-171 path uh, or, or journey, it starts with a self-assessment, deploying Prevail, and making sure you have that all important important documentation package that gives the policies and procedures for your organization. And you know, we're not saying that any of that is easy, but that, those are kind of the key components, right? Definitely. Getting, getting most of the way up to Mount Everest, top of Mount Everest. And then to get to that final tranche, that final uh, bit of the path, you're gonna need a partner uh, because there are things that Prevail just doesn't uh, doesn't manage, like endpoint protection and training. Those are beyond the sphere of what we do. Absolutely. 
And, and also another thought too, is even if, even if Prevail did every single possible thing and, and, and just there was this magic wand you could wave and compliance was done, you would still want to have a partner come in and validate. You would still right. want to be sure because I'll tell you right now, the last thing you want to do is find out that you've done something wrong in a DIBCAC audit. You want right. to find out something is wrong before that, not, not during the audit. Right. All right. Well, thank you so much for walking us through this, Noel. Uh, we should tell people that they can uh, sign up for a free 15 minute consult with you, Noel Vestal. Um, find out, look for the sign up link in the notes. And if they have any questions, how can people reach you? Uh, compliance at prevail.com. Uh, feel free, send, send your questions my way. All right. Pleasure as always, Noel. This has been great. And we'll see everyone on the next episode. Thanks. Bye.